Hey, y'all. It's my cousin in Baltimore. We'll say, listen, thank you so much to all of you who attended the show in person. Watched the live stream on Facebook. Tried to watch the live stream on YouTube. I'm so sorry that the YouTube live stream ended up just going dark. I don't know what happened. And y'all could just only hear the audio. So listen, we are going to show you the recording of the live stream from Facebook so that you can still check it out. So tell your mom, your sister, your auntie, your grandma, your brother, your uncle, your dad. Tell them they can still watch. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And comment below because I want to hear what you thought. Good evening. We want to welcome you to Clarissa Jones Live. So this young cat comes in there, he says, well, I know what your real name 
And on the back it would say, but I want to get one on Thursday. <laughs> when I would see that, I said, oh, I know somebody about to get the Holy Ghost tonight. <laughs> this is true ministry. They didn't have time to do none of that other stuff. They are ready. So it's my favorite. But, uh, you know, at the store break, you also have to be careful because if you join the store front or you feel like the Lord is running on you to join the store front, you might have to wait a minute before you tell them what your day job is. Because you get in the store for a pastor and say, Sister Jones, I hate to work at the post office and that word is God. We've been looking for someone with the gift of administration. Next thing you know, try to be the church secretary and court and the treasurer. So you might have to wait a second before you tell them what your gifts are. But, you know, let's talk a little bit about some of the services that they would have in store for. Anybody familiar with watch night service? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Really, it's the New Year's Eve service, but it's not used to still called the watch night. So, uh, I remember one watch night, and this is James, whose church he is. We grew up in the South, in a small city. So, every watch night, I remember, you know, the pastor would tell me about what time we get there. We used to get there about 10 p.m., because they would say, we're going to pray the whole year out in the New Year. So, what they would do is, when they would have a full service, and you try to have your hands up during worship, you try to focus on the Lord. But then you start getting distracted by the smell of the black eyed peas and the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you like start to drift off. And you want to tie it on the end of the Lord, like Sister Ferguson was saying about, because then you start going, you say, well, what are we eating first? Because <laughs> you know, they had went through the service, because Queen's going to have to sneak out and she can start crying chicken. <laughs> so you can be ready. But then right after the sermon, right, this is the part that I like. Because we had to pray the whole year out of the new year in, you couldn't just pray the whole year out of the new year in standing up or sitting down. You had to humble yourself in the sight of God, humble with no age. So you had to get on your feet. So they would hand out these pillows for your knees. But then them pillows would be so thin, they would have put them back in the basket that Moses was laying when he was going to the Them things would be so thin. You remember CJ? You look, he over there laughing. It would be so thin, you had to push out a cushion in one corner just to try to take it in. Right, it would be you put out the drum, they were just trying to make up stuff. But you need something for your knees because the floor was hard. But yeah, it would be difficult. You would have to get in the prayer line for your knees so that your youth would be renewed. <laughs> you know, after that. But you know, you would pray all year out. Do you win? But see, one watch night, you see, there was church kids, like I said. For see, they didn't have service that night. So me and Sister, we're going to find something to do. Nobody, we was having a party. And then it was rough because it was a small city, right? So there weren't any extra events that we could just go up to. So we got dressed in our best urban wear. Not like this in the church. We got dressed in our best urban wear. Because if we had to go to a party, we would have been shopping at a regular day. You remember? You remember? So we, we dressed in red with expectation, right? Child, we ended up at the 7 Eleven. <laughs> the gas station. We was in there walking around taking pictures with the snacks that we was in Times Square. You hear me? Because we was like, we got to do something. So finally, we just got some boys. Hey, let's just go to somebody's church. <laughs> so we walked outside in the parking lot. And what you know, it was a storefront church right there. <laughs> so we left. So we left. So we got in the parking lot, right? You can hear the music. He heard. He was ready. He was praying for us. We got to go. We got to go. So we walked in about 11.52, like two sinners trying to get there before Jesus. <laughs> so we just showed up at midnight in the watch night. <laughs> so we got there right in time, right? Heard that praise break, and they switched over to the prayer. We said, oh, shoot, we in the right place. They're going to pray the whole year out. New year in. After the prayer, the praise break started back up. And that happened to look over at the drums. For God, my sin, CJ. Ain't nobody on the drums. You got to get on the drums, girl. This man's going to act shy all the way. I ain't going to do that. I said, CJ, we had a store for a church. You going to tear church up? We need this for our story. You got to get on the drum. Get on the drum. <laughs> he said, are you right? You need it for the story. So CJ got up for the story instead of for the Lord. He <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> Look, he walked all the way over to the drums, right? And just right as he was about at the drums, the actual drummer appeared out of nowhere and sat down. <laughs> 
ruined our whole story. <laughs> but anyway, there was another time there with a drum. You can see there the drum. I had talked about my ears. You know, talking about your face and that. And that. <laughs> you might remember this. We were going to visit another church, a much smaller congregation, but you know, churches fellowship each other for their midweek service. So CJ, though, you know, was our main drummer at our church, but I was what they call the second string quarterback. <laughs> second string quarterback. So what I mean is, so CJ would play the drums, but you know, when you're a little kid, you're know, endurance your sound ain't that good, especially when you sense the most high God. So he got out seven minutes before he out, he out, Shane. So then that's what they would call me. See, but this is all I had. This is it. That's all I got. I can speak it up in here fast. I slow it down with the slow song. That's all I got. But when you shout, that's all you really need. You just need an upbeat tempo. So we go, you know, we get ready to go to this church, midweek service, but CJ had to do his homework. So our mama said, I don't care who church y'all go to, unless Jesus will come down here and help Jesus finish his homework, he is not going. <laughs> so he didn't go. <laughs> me and my dad, right? Me and CJ dad, and we showed up at the church. <laughs> and uh, this lady from our church, the room was a fellowship service, so everybody had a new church. This lady from our church, Sister Margaret, got called and it was so long. So I said, okay, I see some guy on the piano. So she said, okay, she got to sing a slow song. Sister so Margaret got up in the pulpit and said she wanted to sing a beat song. All of a sudden, you know, a black church can't talk back. I'm about 15 years old, you cannot talk back. Sister so Margaret said, Clarissa, get up here and play these drums. And I said, okay, so Sister Teresa, I got up, I walked all over, I got on the piano, greeted me into the musician's corner. Let's see, maybe what he did not tell me was that that drum step on the air was a stick. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ain't got to be a drummer touring with Beyonce to know you need two sticks to operate a set of drums. Right, you know. You know. So, this is black church, so we get back, you know, I could not chop back. So, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> I got up there and I played my heart out with that one stick. Sister Margaret sung her song, she sang her heart out at the end of it. Or Ricardo Black, the musician, the other one, the guy on the keyboard said, You play the new drums! You <laughs> call the drums up! I said, They must not have a drum raise. That was not a drum raise. After that, you know, they started requesting me all across the nation to get a man to be a new drummer. But anyway, y'all play too much. But you know, that's what used to happen in the storefront church. You didn't know. But for real, people in the storefront church, Get away with stuff that people in churches with a mortgage will never get. Give me examples. One time with Scott, we went to this storefront church where right? it was over five. So you know the saints already. They get dressed like Sister Ferguson. She made me have to go to the store and put up a sister. Anyway, we walked in. I kid you not, Bishop. We walked in. The prophet came out and was doing a revival with a king. <laughs>
the, what the Lord is doing. <laughs> but see, they don't have no pantyhose. And let you know, the pantyhose would be slick, even on carpet. <laughs> So 
a mashup for the winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good. I saw the mashup get ready. I said, yeah, I'm about to get out of here. But you see what happened was, I had just started wearing wigs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had to get out of but I was like, I know if I get out here with these ushers like this, the best thing fall off, they will be ready, they will be ready. So, if y'all don't see me shout in the church, I don't see that, you know why. I've been mean, getting the back up, just kidding. Just kidding, come on, come on. But anyway, I, I thought I was good at storefront church until I went to an African storefront. Isn't that ever been to an African church? I don't know what you're experiencing, but I'm going to talk later. So, <laughs> yeah, it makes me a little nervous. So, see, I thought it was good. Storefront, so I was an African storefront. So, I said, okay, it's a little bit different. I should have known my first cue, this might not have been a church for me, was when the two people who invited me rolled up on me at Walmart about 11 o'clock in the checkout line with a track. I do it on these too sometimes, but not in the left at Walmart, but who knows? I said, let me, let me listen. This somebody told me about the signs, miracles, and wonders that happened at the church. I said, okay, everybody slip on in there and check y'all out one day. That's not about church because I'm going to visit your church. I said, check y'all out one day. So I decided that Sunday afternoon. So I get up and I get prepared, and I try to get there. A little bit as they were starting. See, sometimes the ushers are too hospitable for me. So I just want to come in and worship. I don't want all the hugs and different things sometimes. So I tried to get there right you know, as they were starting because I didn't want them to realize I'm a first time visitor. This is a storefront. Of course they don't know. They ain't never seen me. So, I was like, <laughs> so uh, music started going. People can give us that African memory. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. 
But you know, the day that we are going to be like Pharaoh, let God's people go. And I told the good people at the Big Shepherd Baptist, we would be out of here by six. But I was going to keep away to move, but I will have to do that. I was going to, you know, at church when you got to ask for permission, I was going to ease over by the pastor and be like, can we get a few more minutes? Just get a few But listen, thank you all so, so much for coming. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. 
So do you want to do that? She said, okay, I'll do it. So thank you, Ian. Thank you.
hearts have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. We thank you, Father God, for the gift of life. Father God, we thank you for the uplifting of our hearts. Somebody in this place today needed to hear this. Somebody in this place today needed to hear that song, O oh, Heavenly Father. Because truly we still believe that you are in the blessing business. Now, Father God, as we prepare to leave this place, never allow us to get out of thy sight, out of thy kingdom. We pray now, Father God, that we don't go looking for the Holy Spirit, but we take the Holy Spirit with us and share with someone there found down here. A wounded heart needs the Spirit in it. And Father God, if you will be so kind, we're going to give you name all the praise. Your name all the glory. And your name all the honor. For we have all in that name which is above every name. The holy and marvelous and magnificent name.